Hello and welcome back to the AI Summit New York. I am joined by Priya Krishnan, Head of Product Management, Data and AI at IBM. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us a bit about the trends that you're seeing in the growth of AI? Uh, yeah, I think the, uh, the first trend, which is the latest trend that we're seeing a lot of buzz around, is around the chat GPT that came out uh, the past weekend. And I don't know if you've had a chance to try it, but I did ask questions about the AI Summit and a lot of things. It was pretty good, actually. So I think the trend around chats and conversational AI in customer care with a lot of um, NLP, natural language processing and foundation models and things, that certainly is a trend that started a while ago, but I think that's the first trend that's going to continue and pick up uh, quite a bit of it. The second one that I'm seeing is, while there is an element of that exploding on one side, there's the other side of the business where there is still the idea of privacy and security that is needed. So the idea of governance around data and AI is still a trend that is picking up more and more, especially with the explosion of AI, there's an explosion of regulations as well. So that's the next trend that I'm seeing. The third one I think is also picking up momentum is around synthetic data, which is to say that, look, if I have these privacy concerns and I still want to be able to experiment and do customer simulations, uh, I want to be able to use data that is, has no privacy concerns or bounds and things like that. So the area of synthetic data, I think is also catching a lot of momentum. The fourth one I would say is all of these in the application area, I'm seeing a lot in the medical space, especially around clinical trials and things like that, with so much data available, with AI being able to do predictions at a much better pace. Uh, the idea of using it for the good in the medical industry, it, it's, it's also disrupting the supply chain, but more so in the medical industry than it has done before. So I would sort of say, these are the four current trends that we're seeing in the AI industry. Okay. And so what are the key challenges you think people come across when adopting AI? Um, I, so the first thing is there's an element of people uh, challenge, which is to say that there is still the lack of talent in the, it, there's a lot of data scientists around, they've learned a lot, but there is, they're so highly skilled that it is still in major industries and we're seeing in applications, it's still a problem because they're not able to get sophisticated data scientists to be able to run what they want to run. Uh, that's changing and I think it'll change over time, especially with more automation and all of the explosion in AI, but the, the talent side is still a challenge for many, many industries. Um, it would be great if everybody could do data science tomorrow at the tip of their fingertips, right? The second one is actually around getting the data itself. So this has been a challenge for so long and it's still of a challenge because the digitization has increased the amount of data available, but it's also not all data is usable. So there's only certain amounts of data that's usable and not all of this data is also available for everybody to use. So there's regulations and privacy concerns around data. So getting access to good data being able to use that data to run your AI applications and models, I think is also a challenge that is still prevalent, especially around privacy concerns. One of our clients had this example where they had data scientists, they had uh, operations in Turkey and in India, for instance, and they had data scientists in both locations. They really wanted to share data because they were building common models, but they had so many privacy concerns around sharing that data that they shut down the whole thing and they were like, nope, you got to do it only for Turkey, you got to do it only for this. So if there was a better way to actually be able to share this data and have all the data concerns around privacy be uh, met, I think that would be a great win for uh, the data side of things. So there's data, there's still the, the talent. And the last one is there is still a ton of manual effort that's going on in the industry. So. We've had clients where just exchanging uh, a data science model between a data scientist and model validators teams is done by Excel, as an example. So that's a lot of back and forth. The manual processes are not in place yet. So I think that's the third challenge that we're seeing. 
uh, if I could summarize in all three. Yeah. Right. And what is IBM doing to um, ease that path to adoption through automated tools, processes and governance? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So um, I come from the IBM's data and AI group and what in data and AI group we have the uh, AI tools to help you build your own models and we also have the AI applications like customer care that help you use what you've built into actual real world applications. The good thing is that we actually build this with an integrated platform, which means all the way from when I talked about the data concerns, so we have technology that helps you share data with multiple stakeholders and ensure that the data privacy concerns are met. So you can only see what you're allowed to see as an example, and you don't have to necessarily move the data all the time. So we have technology that does that, and it's the same platform that's integrated with our AI tools. And our AI tools, our data science platform, lets multiple stakeholders actually come together to build models. So you could all come together to the same platform, get the same set of data that you want, depending on your role, and you can also build models based on your comfort level. If I'm a deep data scientist, and I can write a model in whatever language I want, but if I'm not comfortable, I have drag and drop tools that will help me actually create models. And all of this is done together, so there's visibility and there's stakeholder collaboration across, so that's one thing. And then this is all integrated and automated throughout the life cycle. And in the end, we also have the governance around all of these that are built. And finally, these feed into our AI applications like our customer care chatbots. So I would say it's the integration, it's the automation, and it's bringing together the collaboration across these multiple stakeholders that sort of what sets us apart. And do you have some examples of successful implementations of IBM AI projects? Uh, yeah, many, many, many taboos, but uh, let me think about, let me tell you about two specific ones. Um, one is, the first one is when people think about, uh, when people think about IBM, they think, well, I need to be big, I need to start big, right? That's really not the case. One of our clients that we worked with was a banking client, and what they had was they had AI models built by their data scientists using any tool of their choice. So the first thing was they had too many out there in the wild, wild west, and they had no idea what these even did. So the first thing we did was we went and helped them just catalog the models, look at what was available, put some monitoring metrics in place. Once we had that successful first implementation, now they see the power of extending that to data pieces in our portfolio. And it's very easy because it's an integrated platform. So once you have a construct in place for data science models, you can extend that to actually data itself and you can extend that to applications. So now we're working with them to extend that to sort of what we call a data fabric implementation as well and AI applications as well. So we started small, we saw success, and then we started to build upon that. But the key thing is that we didn't really go in to replace what they had, we went to augment what they had. And that's one example. The second one is actually um, my favorite because we just had a win back from a competitor uh, because what had happened was the competitor's product was chosen at that time because of a certain set of data science capabilities. And, but once the clients started implementing it, they started getting at scale. They started growing quite a few applications. And that's when they realized the whole operating construct and scaling was getting to be very difficult because the tool did not have automation and did not have integration like I talked about in place. So they came back to us and we were actually advisors for them in a lot of this. And then they came back to us and now they want to use our technology just because of the fact that we are able to scale and we, are, we have a very integrated platform uh, that lets you move all the way from collecting your data to actually applying your AI into business applications. So those are some two examples. There are many, many more, of course, that uh, we've done with clients as well. Great, well, thank you so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of the day at the show. Thank you so much for having me, it's been fun. Thank you. Thanks.